Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to swap out the default icons and splash page to different icons that you create. Um, I'm showing you this in Canva. I'm going to go ahead and create a design. Uh, in Visual Studio Code, I managed to get the width and the height just by clicking on the image and it showed in the bottom right corner. And from that I can create a new design that sort of matches those that layout. I'm going to go ahead and create two. I'm going to have one with a clear background that's going to be used on Android. And I'm going to have one with a colored black background. Um, I'm just going to make a really basic logo here in Canva. Uh, if you have like a different tool you use, you can use a different tool. But I find Canva's really easy if you're wanting to do something pretty quick. I'm just going to drag in a different flame to make it look a little bit different. I think this one down here fits nicely with my logo, so I'm going to drag it in and I'm going to rotate it and adjust its size. Just playing around with what fits and it could take a little while to figure out what's going to work for you, but I think this will work well enough for me. I'm going to have something sort of similar on the other side. I'm also going to change the color slightly. I actually like this blue color a bit better, so I'm going to use this blue color. I'm going to flip that horizontally so that it looks like the mirror image because we've got very much a mirror image um, logo. And I'm going to rotate it a bit as well. I don't want it actually to match perfectly with the other side. I want a little bit of variation, uh, but I want it looking sim sort of symmetrical in a way. You can play around with adding a little bit more if you want to, but I'm just going to skip ahead to when I've got this complete now. Once you've got it complete, you can go ahead and download it. This is going to be my Android one, so I selected transparent background. I think you need Pro to do transparent background, and I do have Pro. Um, so if you don't have Pro, you might need to use a different tool, something like GIMP. There are so many different options here. I'm going to create my iOS one now, and I'm going to create a background for it. I'm just clicking for different colors to see what will fit. I think this like golden yellowy orange background is quite nice with the very slight blue color. So I'm going to go ahead and download that one too. I accidentally downloaded both of those. If you want to download an individual one, you unselect, select the one you want to download and then download. You'll also want to make sure that PNG is selected. So heading back over to Visual Studio Code, I'm going to swap in my different icons and I'll just name them the same thing. That means that I don't need to do as much updates in the app.json, but you can rename them and just refer to them by their name in app.json if you wish. So my untitled design free is my adaptive icon, and so I'm going to go ahead and rename that as that. But first, I'm going to need to delete this adaptive icon. I'll just move that to the trash and then I can rename. I'm going to want to do the same with my Untitled Design 4, except that one's going to be named icon.png. So I'm deleting my icon.png and renaming my Untitled Design 4 with as icon.png. When I have my app as a standalone app, then I'll be able to see that icon. It should also display in Expo Go. So I've just looked up the sizing for the splash screen and I'm going to go ahead and create a design that matches that. And I'm just going to copy this onto my um, design here. I 
and change the background color of my design. So I'll paste that logo in and I'll just resize it to how I want it to look. You can see that this is a particular resolution, so this isn't going to work well for um, like an iPad, but you can select different resize modes and handle that accordingly. And you can also set like a background color so that it fills the remaining space with the background color. And I'll show you that a bit later as well. I didn't put much thought into my logo, but I feel like my logo is a bit more like relaxation vibes. So I'm going to choose this font and make some tweaks to the text. Maybe it's like a yoga app or something like that, or meditation. So I've changed the text to relax, unwind. I'm going to change that text color to make it a bit more visible and also keep this sort of duotone style going. I'm also going to resize that to fit better with the logo. I'm going to highlight everything and center it in the page to do that I'm just grouping it first. Now that's done, I can go ahead and download that and I can replace it in Visual Studio Code as my splash screen. So I'm dragging in my new splash screen and I'm going to delete this splash.png. And rename this one to splash.png. This will show when the app is loading. So if there's like things loading, then it could take a little while to load. You can actually control whether it's still loading. If you're waiting on resources, there's a um, some documentation of that that I can link. Finally, just going to go ahead and create the fav icon. This actually is only needed if you're going to be making your app available in the, in the on the web. Um, I typically don't. I usually use uh, React Native purely for iOS and Android, but I know a lot of people might use it for other things. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a little flame here. I'm keeping this logo a bit more simple, but still recognizable. Um, and the reason for that is that you want to have it sort of be recognizable, but it's going to be so small because it's that little icon at, in the tab that you need people to be able to um, yeah, recognize it based on a really small design. So I've renamed that favicon.png and when I go look at the web, it's going to show up. Now that I've created all my assets, I'm going to go ahead and see what it looks like when I open my app. This is going to show you the splash screen. So opening the app, I can see my splash screen there. It looks really nice as expected. It has the correct aspect ratio on an iPhone device. Um, trying it on an iPad would probably yield different results, so I'm wanting to check out an iPad as well. It's going to take a little while to kick up. So I'm going ahead right now and opening it on the iPad. It installs Expo Go and shows it. You could sort of see those white outlines where the, around the splash screen. Um, and that's something that I can sort out. So heading over to the app.json file, you can see that this splash has an image and it's also got the color, the background color. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just use the picker tool, the eyedropper, sorry, and I'm going to go check what that color is right there, that orange color that I'm using for the background of all my icons. 
and I'm just going to paste it in here. That's going to form my background color for my adaptive icon and my splash when it's um, when the aspect ratio is a bit different. So I'm going to do a reload now. And you could see that there was no white around that and it looked a lot more um, cohesive. Now I'm going to go ahead and build my standalone build. And so the reason I'm building the standalone build is so you can see how the app icon would look actually on an Android device or iOS device. So first off, I need to configure my build profiles. Uh, I'm actually having an issue here because I've actually used this slug before, so I'm going to go ahead and have to update that in my app.json file. Just going to update the um, number at the end. And that's just how it's referred to inside Expo itself so that it can manage the projects independently. It's kind of like a project ID of sorts. Inside the build development profile, I'm going to go ahead and add an iOS section and say they want it to build for the simulator. This is just so that once I do my iOS build, I can just install it directly on the simulator without having to install it on a device. It makes it easier to show you guys how it's working. It's going to ask me if it wants to, if I want to install Expo Dev Client, and I do, so I'm got, I've approved that, and it will install that, and it will ask a few more questions to help set up. And it's kicked off that iOS build. I can go ahead and change the platform to Android, and it will go ahead and kick off an Android build as well. They'll be queued in um, Expo, as I'm just using the free version. So this allows you to sort of build it off your machine. And it's sort of super simple because you don't need to set up any, like, download any tooling associated with building for these platforms. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and show how to run on the web, just so you can see the fav icon. I'm going to need to do this install, so I'm copying that there, and I'll just run that. Once that's installed, I can start up my Expo app again, and I can click W to run on the web. It's going to load up, and you can see my fav icon in the corner of that tab up there. You can see why you need such like a small, simple icon so it's recognizable. My simulator build is now done, so I can go ahead and down that, load that. I'm then dragging my my new app onto the iOS sim, uh, simulator. I'm just going to close the current app and you can see my apps in there now. And you can see that that app is like the app icons there, but I can go ahead and start the app in dev client mode and I can use my standalone app. You could see that that um, splash screen was all looking quite good. Once Android's done, you can head on over and download the build for that. Once again, you'll be dragging this onto the Android emulator, much like you did for the simulator. So you can sort of see that the icon itself is not ideal in an Android world, so you may actually want to look at the material design guidelines and get templates to determine what a good Android icon might be. Um, yeah. And you can sort of see the same for the splash screen there. So that's my tutorial today. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll make sure to include all my code on GitHub.